What's up, y'all? I thought it'd be cool to make a video about my mouthpiece collection. Just about every professional trumpet player has a pretty extensive mouthpiece collection of mouthpieces they used to use or currently use. And so I'm going to talk about the mouthpieces I've used over the years and how I ended up with these three mouthpieces that you see over here in these horns that I use um, as my main workhorse mouthpieces. So let's dive in. Trumpet stuff box here. This trumpet stuff. Got a little corks there. All right, let's organize this here. Hey y'all, this is Victor Haskins. Welcome to the Mouthpiece Vault video. In this video, we're gonna talk about all these different mouthpieces I've played over the years. I don't have a super extensive mouthpiece collection like some trumpet players do. Um, and that's mostly because uh, I happen to find the things that work for me. And for me, I like to play one mouthpiece on a horn and use that mouthpiece for all the work I have to do on that horn. I don't like switching mouthpieces. I don't like, you know, oh, I have to play this gig. Let's use this mouthpiece. No, I like having one mouthpiece and use it for everything. So it's important that I find the mouthpiece that does the best all around job. So I'm a Dennis Wick artist. I play all Dennis Wick mouthpieces on the trumpet. I play a Dennis Wick two heavy top. Okay. I generally like deeper mouthpieces with wider rims. That gives me the sound concept that I hear. And it gives me the most comfortable experience playing for my lip size. Uh, on the cornet, I play a Dennis Wick 1B Heritage. Okay, that's what that looks like. And then on the flugelhorn, I play a Dennis Wick 2FL. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is like the only flugelhorn mouthpiece I've actually probably ever owned or played. Because it's a great mouthpiece, and I'll talk about that a little bit later about why that is. So, let's go back to the very beginning of where it started. Uh, I started playing the trumpet in India in the 6th grade, and I... My first trumpet I owned was this off-brand Indian trumpet with an off-brand 7C mouthpiece, which is probably the most common mouthpiece that comes with any horn that you might buy. And a 7C is not great. So I get to the States in the 7th grade, and I get a 5C, like an off-brand equivalent of a Bach 5C. And that was a little bit better, a little bit wider rim. And then later in 7th grade, I got this 3C from Giardinelli, which I don't even think exists anymore as a company. And actually, it is a silver-plated mouthpiece, but it looks gold or brass because I shaved all the silver off to make it look like it was gold, which is actually probably not safe because this is raw brass. So anyway, um, I played a 3C for a while, and then in high school, I played a Bach Megatone 1. Yeah, so this is here. And that worked for the sound concept I was going for, and deep cup that's the deepest cup widest rim you can get i'm pretty sure maybe this maybe the 1x is bigger than that but this was a lot of work right and you know i was willing to do the work because it helped me get the sound because sound is everything as a musician but uh i discovered later in college that uh, i could get the same sound with less work by playing a bach 1b um but i did miss the heavyweight nature of the megatone and that's actually important because if you notice like i said at the beginning i play a dennis wick heavy top too, because I like the extra weight on the mouthpiece. It makes a difference. It makes a difference for how it projects, and how the tone feels, and I love heavy mouthpieces. So, also in college, during my first year, I had to play lead, lead trumpet in the Jazz Orchestra 2. I'm not a lead player. I don't aspire to do that, but I did it because, you know, I know the style well, but uh, I do not like playing high notes. But anyway, I had to figure out some equipment that will help me get through that year of doing that. And this is a Megatone 1E, a Bach Megatone 1E. Uh, very shallow cup. Actually, if you look at that, right? A little cookie cutter mouthpiece. Never really figured out how to use that. And another friend of mine, let me borrow some of these typical lead shoki pieces, a 13A4A, 14A4A. You can see those are cookie cutter mouthpieces also. Never figured those out either. I actually never even played those. That wasn't for me. Um, later, uh, I ended up getting these Brasswind Research mouthpieces. And their concept was you find the rim that works for your lips, and then the lower part, the shank and the cup, all this was modular, so that way you could get a darker or brighter sound. And my concept for the trumpet at the time that I got those mouthpieces was to have a darker sound akin to a cornet. So if you listen to my first album, The Truth, I'm playing my trumpet with one of these mouthpieces in there so it sounds mellower than a trumpet sound. And... Um, 
maybe a year or two after that is when I ran to the Dennis Wick booth at um, the International Trumpet Guild Conference, and they had these heritage mouthpieces that just came out for the cornet, and I was trying them on some different cornets. I didn't play any cornet at the time, but I was like, oh my gosh, this is a game changer. It makes the cornet fun to play. It feels like I, I can play the cornet and shape it the way I want, shape the tone the way I wanted to. I could get around the range of the horn very easily. Um, it didn't feel like it used to feel to play the cornet on other cornet mouthpieces, which it felt like and the cornet was playing me. You know, it was telling me how it wanted to be played, but this allowed me to do what I wanted to do with the horn. And so I was like, I need to get a cornet now. So this kind of changed that direction for me. And of course, because I started playing the cornet, which was a sound I was hearing from my main horn sound, I switched to this as my trumpet mouthpiece because uh, I wanted my trumpet to sound more like a trumpet and not like a cornet, which made sense because now I had a cornet. Um, like I said, this 2FL is the only flugelhorn mouthpiece I've ever really owned. This V cup, look at that deep, deep V cup. That's super important. So if you look at like a trumpet mouthpiece, right, it's got a D cup, right? The, the cup is shaped like a D on the inside, right? That's like flat. Yeah, it's like curved like this, but the flugelhorn mouthpiece, a good one, has this V cup shape, and that just like you see a French horn mouthpiece up close, it's got a V cup because you want that dark, those dark overtones to be uh, accentuated, and that gives you that dark sound. And you want the same thing on a flugelhorn, and so um, this is a great mouthpiece. You can get around the horn um, with ease, as well as have the great flugelhorn characteristic flugelhorn sound. So. Um, and of course, even though this is my main trumpet piece, I'm always interested in trying different mouthpieces that come out to see if something might work better. Um, so I've tried out this uh, Dennis Wick Ultra and this Dennis Wick Heritage Trumpet mouthpiece. Um, but I, I've played on this for so long that this is just like the, the sound that I hear when I'm playing the trumpet. And so I, I didn't end up switching to these, but they are very nice mouthpieces. Um, and so that's my concept for mouthpieces is to find what works for you and find what works for most of the situations you play in and play the same thing on everything. I do not like switching mouthpieces. I, do, I just don't like having to do that. Um, so maybe you have a different concept, but if you didn't have any idea about how to select equipment, I suggest you try out a lot of different things. Um, take some time with it. I'm actually gonna make another video about how to get acclimated to a mouthpiece and, and figure out um, if it's the right mouthpiece for you. So look out for that video coming soon. Um, but like I said, there's no one way to do it. You might be the kind of person who likes to switch equipment depending on what your genre of music you're playing or what kind of ensemble you're in or what kind of situation you're, you're playing in. But for me, I find what works for most situations and I stick with that and I don't change it. Um, so like I said, if you want in the comments when you see this video, wherever you see it posted on YouTube or other places on the internet, Tell me in the comments what your concept is for selecting a mouthpiece, whether that's uh, you like tighter equipment or bigger equipment, or if you like to switch mouthpieces, or if you like to stick to one thing. Um, Cause it'd be interesting to have a discussion about that uh, amongst whoever sees this video um, to see what everyone's concept for dealing with equipment is. And that's all I've got for you guys. So thank you. My name is Victor Haskins and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.